to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Seems I will apply to be a member of this church. Let me just know the procedures and then I'll go through it. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, House on the Rock. By extension, thank you again, Dr. Luca. Hallelujah. My time here will be very brief, but I believe that it will be life transforming. Let's hold hands together as we just pray and ask the Lord to give us the word that will lift, will bless, will change. Please make sure you're praying. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray from the depth of your heart. We're going straight to the word. And I believe in the name that is above all names that this word will turn our lives around. To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy We'll see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy Let's pray the prayer now Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you. I want to see you. Lift your hands, lift your voices, and let's cry to the God of heaven. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. We want to see you. I want to see you. This night will truly be an encounter. Every moment with you must be life transforming. Tonight we have gathered here men and women of God who continue to carry the gospel around this city. We have here veterans of business. We have individuals who are just here to love you, to know you more. I pray that every single one of us would live here satisfied would live here imparted in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord. I'm teaching tonight on the secret place. I, I believe, I believe that it is important for believers, it is important for a territory and it is important for a generation to understand not only how to know God, but how to access power with God. Um, because of the way and manner by the grace of God that he has walked and continues to walk through my life, every time I have the opportunity to meet with people, usually the questions that they would ask me would be centered around the matters of the anointing. They would want to know what, what exactly, what does it take to be mightily used by God? What does it take to really host God? What does it take to carry the anointing? What does it take to access power with God? Please, I want you to pay attention. I'm sure you will be glad you came for this meeting tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And... As a student of revival and stud a student of the move of God, I've read a lot of books, believe me, without exaggeration. Um, every book I find that has to do with the move of God, the power of God, the workings of the spirit, I would have it and learn and learn. And I found out that over time, Many believers continue to read these books and even attend lots of meetings, but they never seem to get the vital ingredients. Please pay attention. The vital ingredients that can really bring a man to a point where you will have power with God for a generation, not for an assembly, not for a family. Power with God for a generation. Maybe I should start by letting us know that there are different levels. We're not talking about this, but I just want to. There are different levels of the anointing. There is the anointing that comes upon you as a believer by reason of your being grafted into Christ through the experience that we know theologically as the new birth. Are we together? If you're with me, please say amen. That means that every time I'm translated from the kingdom of darkness according to scripture to the kingdom of his dear son, there is an unction, there is a measure of grace that I can carry, a measure of the anointing. Number two, there is the anointing that comes upon your life by reason of the office that you occupy, ministerially speaking. He gave gifts to men. The gifts are not talents. The gifts are men to men. Are we together? And that every time God would call a man to represent him in any dimension at all, there is a measure, an allocation of grace that comes not by reason of the man. The anointing does not come because of the man. The anointing comes because of the office and only leaves when the office is no more. The anointing has nothing necessarily to do with the spiritual health of the man. The anointing is there in honor of the office. Are we together? Then there is another dimension of the anointing that can come upon a man not just because you are a believer in Christ, not just because you are called to serve in an office, but by reason of your ability to have discerned the current move of God. It is a reward for sustaining the ability in the spirit to know what God is doing in the now and then to bend through the sacrifice of alignment to be available. So it is possible to find two prophets, two apostles, two pastors, two teachers and all of them called into that office. But there is an advantage upon one by reason of the ability to discern what God is doing. The move of God 
and the current dealings of God has the grace that waits for alignment to rest upon those who can discern and know what God is doing at the moment. So it is possible to find a man who has not backslidden but does not carry the grace for what God is doing now. You can meet the man and be blessed generally as far as his office is concerned but you will find out that he may not sustain the ability to respond to you with respect to what God is doing. It is very difficult to walk in these three anointings at the same time because the flexibility in the spirit that will be required the dynamism around navigating the move of God the ability to know that God is done with a level and sustain the humility to switch regardless of how controversial you will look is the reason why many people may not be able to switch and truly I tell you every time I see a man of God and I see a ministry that is flexible enough to understand the dealings of God. I have great regard for them. Your pastor truly being one of them. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And so I, I, I saw the need to contribute according to the measure of grace to really help the body of Christ understand the sequence, the protocol. What must a man do to really access power with God? And if you lend me your attention for the next two minutes, you will be surprised. Or the next few minutes, really. Hallelujah. I'm hearing in my spirit a prophet is born a prophet is born a prophet is born just just allow me to do my thing you, I'm, I'm, no it's not I'm, a prophet is born when God speaks like this there is a grace that is such a prophet is born a prophet is born a prophet is born a prophet is born the prophet is born. Hmm. Shabas kabaratos kiyada. Riko sheli brahas kibadashiyala. Mandela subratis kalatu shebratiya. Prophet is born. We stir up the wells in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open now. With understanding, you order the seas. said this is the house of God and he called it the house of God because there is a gate that leads to the throne the condition for a place to be called the house of God is that there must be a gate from that place that touches the throne 
Psalm 139, please. Psalm 139. Please, can you look for strings for me, my Please, strings, strings. Psalm 139 and verse 7. I apologize for my um, unconventional way of just approaching this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please be sensitive. What I'm teaching is very deep tonight. I truly believe it will contribute to our spiritual lives. And while I teach, as the Holy Spirit begins to impart, just help guide the people so they don't injure themselves while they listen. Hallelujah. 139 from verse 7. Psalms 139. It says, Whither shall I go from your presence? The psalmist. Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? We're reading to verse 12. It says, If I ascend up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Verse 9. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. 11. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. It says, yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day, and the darkness and the light are both alike to thee. That means that the psalmist is bringing us to a realization that there is a dimension of God where nothing hides before him. The heavens, the earth, light and darkness mean nothing to him. Are we together now? So we, we establish from this scripture that God is everywhere. Please say God is everywhere. But God does not meet people everywhere. Please listen. This is a spiritual technology that many believers do not know. It has nothing to do with the Old and the New Testament. God does not meet people everywhere. Knowing God is atmosphere dependent. Everywhere cannot be conducive for an encounter. No businessman will meet with someone to discuss matters of destiny by the roadside they usually will labor to create and initiate an atmosphere look at the the arrangement that happened between trump and the north korean leader just to have a discussion that had the capacity to alter a destiny god is everywhere hear me but he does not meet with men everywhere the secret place is one of the mysteries behind the unusual dimension of the life the power and the glory of God upon a man the awareness that although he is everywhere when it has to do with intimacy there has to be an understanding that God is very 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 meticulous about the atmosphere that invites him hallelujah I have learned in my experience that the secret place is one of the deep mysteries behind the continuity of a man's Christian experience the efficiency the impact the consistency it is impossible for a man to sustainably carry the presence, the light, the power, the relevance of the spirit across the length of a generation without an understanding of the secret place. You may know how to preach. You may even be anointed. It is not enough to last. Being called is not a guarantee that you will finish strong. Having a flourishing ministry is not a guarantee that you will continually be used. Being used yesterday does not guarantee that you will be used today. Every day has its requirements and you must qualify to be used. That you were used in the move of God yesterday will not ne necessarily mean that you will be used tomorrow. A secret place. 
It's a mystery I learned early in life by the grace of God. And it's been one of the secrets behind the sustaining power of God. Pastor, I have seen preachers sincerely. And, and, and I say this with, 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 not with any sense of sarcasm. I love the body of Christ. But you can see a man, freshness is discernible. You can discern freshness. You will not necessarily have to be new, but you must be fresh. You can know that a man has not backslidden, but he stopped growing a long time ago. You don't have to backslide to know there is a problem. There is a problem when you stop where you are. Praise the Lord. Freshness. The freshness that comes with the word. I'm not just talking about the theological accuracy. I'm not just talking of the linguistic prowess. These things are wonderful. But none of this in themselves will replace genuine freshness. The product of his presence upon you. You can fake power but never his presence. There are many people who are not fresh. It is easy to download messages. It is easy to just attend a seminar with a, a buffet of intelligent preachers and fish new revelations here and there from everyone. Conjure them together to become a series. It will never replace freshness. That which I show you tonight is a big secret that many people do not know. Being a prayer warrior does not mean you have a secret place. No, sir. Being a fasting giant does not mean you have a secret place. There is a realm where men must meet God to truly contact power. Hallelujah. This message is especially important for those of us who are in the work of the ministry. Because the truth is that the more you rise, you do not have the luxury of time again. And it takes time to know God. It takes time to grow. It takes time to build the kind of capacity and power that can cause you to be trusted with the destiny of a generation. And we, by the reason and the nature of our work, may not have that ability, the, the luxury of time, and there must be a discipline applied in your life to be able to master the mystery of the secret place. Psalm 91 verse 1. Psalm 91 verse 1. Please read with me. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Please keep it there. The secret place is not a place where we visit and dwell corporately. There is no husband and wife in the secret place. There is no pastor and members in the secret place. There is no man of God alongside his congregation. It is only he and God. The secret place is not a place where you go corporately. No, sir. The secret place is not the place where you go as a congregation or as a couple or as a family. Uh-uh. You can have a corporate visitation like we're having now. But the secret place is akin to a place of intimacy between a man and and his wife it is unlawful to be invited into that environment because it is the place of intimacy an exchange is about to happen in the place of intimacy I show you why many believers are weak it is because they have not learned the system of exchanging their weakness for the strength that only comes from the secret place I will share with you a few things and then we'll pray. Is it alright if we pray? It's a midweek service. So we pray. 
I can look at your life and by discernment know the level and the quality and the health of your secret place. There are indices that I can see in your life that are attestations whether or not you are one who knows God. You cannot, you can't fake the secret place. No, the same way you see a fresh student in a university, no matter how matured he tries to look, something will betray him. You will know this guy just got admission. That is the same way you can see a person and know, although you are a man of God, although you are popular, maybe, although you preach well, but I do not see the signs. There are signs that are attestations. A man approved of God. There are signs. There are signatures that must be around your life. When a president is passing, there are signs you are looking for. And then you say, this is true. He's the one. When an umbrella is knocking, there are signs you look for. When a child is playing, there are signs you look for. There are signs that must be around your life to show that you are a man and a woman of the secret place. Can we discuss a few of them? Number one, brokenness. Genuine brokenness. The first sign that is an attestation of a healthy secret place is not anointing. Listen. Not anointing, in order of priority, brokenness. The degree to which I see death walk in you is proof to me that you have met God. There are things God cannot allow to go back with you when you meet him. No, no. I can know you have met God by the damage that I see in your flesh. There has to be something about that encounter. I, I don't need to look at your spirit to know whether you met God. I need to look at your flesh. If your flesh still stands and gains ascendance, it's not God you met. Not the God of the Bible. Not the God of the Hebrews. Not the God that will bring flesh down to the place of nothingness. Genuine brokenness. Not power. Not a ministry. Not a sermon. Not revelation not impartation i look at your life and the first sign of a healthy secret place is brokenness psalms 51 and verse 17 the sacrifices of god are a broken spirit a broken and a contrite heart oh god thou will not despise listen let me tell you something about the strength of god the strength of god never comes to strong people it searches for weakness when it comes and finds you strong it goes back and waits until the day your strength disappoints you then your weakness calls it to come listen very carefully brokenness is proof of humility let me tell you what brokenness is we david is a man who, whose life continues to inspire me. I know why God loved David. David would go to God in the secret place and say, Lord, search my heart. Try my thoughts. Vet them. Create a system of vetting my motives. And if for any reason you find anything there that is not you, I allow you to do as you please with it. Broken. I tell you why people are up today and down tomorrow and, and I don't mean I don't mean to be sarcastic but brokenness when you see a man become proud become pompous becomes dishonoring and careless with your life is proof of the absence of the secret place for a long time when you get into the secret place you don't go there as a man of God you go no, 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 no. You go there and allow the Lord of hosts. There is a name he is called. And his light begins to pass through the darkness of your heart. 
and not to condemn you but you know you have met him when there is a list of the things that must change and the things that must die oh I see that you're a man of God but the last two weeks my verdict is that lust is beginning to grow in you and something must be done this has nothing to do with backsliding it is a system by which men reign and last and remain relevant in a generation I see your life and since the prophetic grace came upon you God says there's pride and so I need to reveal it here I notice because of the persecution coming there's offense growing and the list is there and he brings you to a point where he says what do we do about it and you get down on your knees and say Lord who can help himself when the God of heaven does not help him so while men clap for you outside you are there securing your future through brokenness show me a broken man and I tell you someone who Satan cannot do anything about again every evil thrives on pride it is difficult for God to ignore a broken man listen to me failure does not produce failure failure is the mother that gives birth to success it is success that produces failure be careful when things begin to work because that is when you really fail when the ministry is growing when the grace is speaking when the influence is multiplying when the applauds are coming death is by the corner weakness is by the corner the temptation of great men is to fall down when Jesus took Jesus to when Satan took Jesus to a holy mountain his temptation was fall down after all angels will hold you the temptation of the great is to be careless and fall please hear what I teach you tonight this is the voice of the spirit so that you do not abort that which God is desiring to do in your life it's not enough to be available you must be usable Because there are vessels that are unto honor and there are vessels that are unto dishonor. The condition is not fasting. If a man will purge himself, then that man will be a vessel unto honor, meat for the master's use. Brokenness. When I go before the Lord, I don't go as Apostle Joshua Selman, the great man that everybody is talking about the miracle worker, the one with the spirit of revelation. No. When I go before the Lord, I say, Lord, your son and your child is here, full of my ignorance and foolishness. Except your mercy speaks upon me, I don't trust myself. I don't know what my vulnerabilities are. I've not gone far enough to know what I can do. There are realms I've not entered. And before I disappoint myself, let me come to the God with the all-seeing eye. Broken. Let me show you how great people last in this kingdom. You go to God as a colleague. You go to God as a man of God to receive one or two instructions. You will never rise. Every time people begin to applaud me and say these wonderful things. I, I appreciate them and I truly do. But when I'm alone, I say, my father, I have come again. Let me tell you. It is harder to remain successful than it is to become successful. When a generation looks at you as the voice of God for that generation, it is a serious burden. Most people do not know the burden of greatness. It takes stamina to carry greatness. It takes more than desire. You must sustain the stamina. Because all hell is around you waiting for something. Those who your greatness is killing their excuses are waiting and praying and hoping that you come down to justify that all men are the same. You need brokenness to remain. All kinds of prophecies in the air waiting for your weakness to confirm it. When I see great people do certain things, I get afraid even for them. 
greatness is a realm that you must be trained to stand there it's a slippery path there is a skill to remain in great takes more than desire brokenness if you're a man of God here please listen in the name of the Lord Jesus because the arsenals of darkness continue to loom across ministries and men of God I've announced this again and again that I saw a swarm of like, like bees I saw this two years ago just arise and distribute themselves across the church it will take men who understand brokenness to last in this season you will get to a point as a man of God where everything you do is considered a direction from God including your mistakes you will have to be honest with God to go back and say Lord you didn't tell me you wanted to heal I did it out of the the need to show myself but thank you for covering my shame I still return to repent although the meeting was powerful brokenness where you assess yourself in the light of purity and sincerity and while people are saying that meeting was mighty you say Lord you spoke about only one person I prophesied to 90 people you had no hand in it you only honored your name in that meeting I must still return and say search my heart try my thoughts the uploads of men are weapons of mass destruction they can clap you to your grave I say this especially to those of us who are upcoming as God is helping us celebrate success but do it with intelligence brokenness the secret place is a place of brokenness you cannot walk with God when you are complete what then is his contribution in your life so when he comes and meets a complete you he breaks you so that the part of your weakness becomes where he comes into your life God does not use complete people so Jacob wants to be used by God God says Jacob you are standing in the strength of yourself I must do something to you that reminds you that without me you are not complete and his tie is touched for many years I wondered why God would be so wicked to a man to destabilize his structure and remove something out of his system that will make God the completion of that man's life I continue to pray and ask the Lord to show me his mercy that any door he will ever open in my life that will make me neglect my secret place and I even I say it as I preach now may that door never open in my life listen you see when you see God use a man ask for the stories not the results brokenness my house is my altar every part of my house is an altar is a place where I cry before God there are times I sleep on my knees crying to the God of heaven you are the one who shows men mercy show your son mercy oh God too many people are depending on this grace there is no room to fail show mercy from the abundance of your grace there are realms you get to where you don't need to pray give me tea and bread because God would have solved it your cry will be the cry of brokenness take away pride Take away lost. You don't sit down and say, I'm too big, I'm in my car. Ah. Jesus almost gave up at Gethsemane and brokenness quickly brought him back. Nevertheless, not my will. Are we together? Let's hurry. Number two. The second token I can know that you are a man of the secret place to the degree to which I see the riches of God's mercy upon your life ah. let me teach you something about mercy tonight that will change your life the mercy of God is something that people don't like to talk about because every time you say mercy um, usually people think that you are a fornicator or you are 
a thief or something so most people don't like the idea of mercy as a way of trying to preserve I'm, I'm not I'm not guilty of anything so why should I need mercy you will learn in this kingdom that mercy is the lifeline of your your the continuity of your relevance mercy has nothing to do with being a sinner is a system by which God vetoes and overlooks your weaknesses. It's a powerful system. Mercy. Psalm 86, please, and verse 5. And then we look at Lamentations chapter 3. It's all right if we do this as a Bible study. Psalm 86 and verse 5. Let's hurry up, please. It says, For thou, O Lord, art good, and ready to forgive help me please and plenteous in mercy not unto them that need it not unto them that need it your needing mercy does not bring mercy to you you must be humble to cry for mercy notice in scripture every time a man told God have mercy faith was not mentioned again thou son of David have mercy on me I don't have an idea of what I need to do. But if you are there, help me. Let me tell you this. You will see two people make the same mistake. And one will pass as if Satan does not exist. And the other becomes a victim. I tell you, men know how to run to God to say, Lord, I know that the Lord is gracious and compassionate. Slow to anger and rich in love. Mercy is a language of champions, not sinners. You will need the mercy of God upon your life for as long as you live. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Give us Lamentations chapter 3 and 22. Please know these scriptures as God is lifting you. These are arsenals that you will need for your continuity. That it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion fail not there have been things in my life that I got that I cannot remember praying for there are realms and dimensions I entered that I cannot exactly remember asking God for I would not be foolish to receive the applause of men as though it were my making I know his mercy above the mercy seat below the cherubims there I will meet with you God meets with men at the place of mercy is one of the ways that God helped men. Let me tell you this. Fearful is a man who God directs his jealousy towards. You will wait for his fall and you will never see him fall. Even if he was supposed to. Mercy is a dimension of God that is strangely mysterious. The ability to see and act like he did not see. Mercy. mercy 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 that we can obtain mercy from the throne of grace let me show you a scripture Psalm 25 and verse 6 and 7 is God blessing someone tonight Psalm 25 6 7 please read with me want to read remember O Lord thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses for they have been ever of old 27 remember not the sins of my youth nor my transgressions according to thy mercy remember thou me for thy goodness sake let me tell you sincerely precious people of God it is true that the soul that sinneth it shall die it is true that the throne of God is built upon righteousness and justice the Bible says they are the foundations of his throne. God is a very powerful God. Knowing that his mercy will need to come in. You see, when God's mercy comes in, he uses his discretion and his sovereignty to be the basis of relating with man. It no longer is your faith. Now, understand what I said. Let me repeat myself. The mercy of God does not negate the reality of faith. Don't get me wrong. 
But I'm saying that the moment the mercy of God is invoked, the condition, the premise for his relating with you changes. It, it now becomes his, his prerogative absolutely having nothing to do with your being qualified or not. It's not a, li a license for licentiousness. It is his system. They, these are tokens of advantage. God knows that it is impossible for a man in his lifetime to be flawless. It takes obeying God thoroughly to see all of him. And nobody sustains that ability in the flesh. And so he interjected tokens like mercy and favor as ways of correcting the limitations of men so that in spite of you you will still arrive listen do you know why satan cannot be forgiven because mercy only works in time if you do not dwell in the realm of time you are not a candidate of mercy hey. this is the reason why god The angels that left their original estate, there is no record in scripture for a possibility that they will ever be restituted into the program of God. They are gone and gone for good. Lucifer inclusive. Are we together? That anyone who is not part of the program of God in time cannot experience his mercy. You will experience his justice but not his mercy. Knowing the vulnerability of the man he seeks to use, he not only gave us mercy but programmed it in time to recycle every 24 hours. The same way he gave time. So the Bible says his mercies are new every morning. You can take advantage of mercy planted and programmed in time that he showed you mercy yesterday. If it was not attached to time, then it can be that this is enough for you. But now, the mercy of yesterday has nothing to do with the mercy of tomorrow. This gives us an opportunity to continue to remedy for the default of our humanity again and again and again. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. It's a revelation that we must understand. One time, a man of God was sharing how that they were in a pastor's conference and Papa Ia Deboe was there and they had a session where they needed to just pray and everyone was praying and he came to lie down close to the altar near the great father of faith so that he would hear how he was going to pray. And he said for over two hours, all he was saying was mercy, mercy Lord, mercy, mercy Lord. The younger ministers were shouting, God, this land must arrive. You, I mean, the, the, how much is meant? How much is this? Oh God, this building, this church. There is a realm you get to where you don't have prayer requests again. Your requests are useless when mercy is not there. The tray that will carry your greatness is called mercy. You will need the mercy of God to both stand and last. Mercy. Number three. I know you are a man of the secret place. When I see the depth of spiritual illumination, your access to light, the body of knowledge allocated for the victory of the saints can only be accessed, not just in a Bible study, generically speaking. You will need to truly stay with God in the secret place to access spiritual illumination. The king had a dream, forgot the dream, forgot the interpretation. And in the days of Daniel, they were about to kill everyone. And Daniel said, let the king not be so hasty. Just give us time. And then the Bible says that Daniel went, discussed with his friends and stayed in the secret place to pray. And then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. 
there are things that will never come by any amount of study there is a kind of knowledge that comes as a token when his presence is living the rub off of that light you receive it as a mystery that will last for years that was how Moses wrote Genesis the five books down to Deuteronomy he was able to see what we know theologically as the back of God to see eternity past listen to me you don't get the spirit of revelation just by listening to messages and listening to men of God that is wonderful don't get me wrong the eye of the spirit is a reward you must trust God for the grace to stay until you see listen when Jesus resurrected, well, I'm, I'm rushing because we have to pray and, and, and time is not on our side. When Jesus resurrected, the Bible tells us, if you remember, that Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. Remember that other disciples had come to the tomb. They looked, but they didn't have the time to wait, so they did not see Jesus. But a woman came and looked and said, I'm not going as she stayed there looking suddenly two angels appeared and said madam what are you looking at when you stay and look you will see yes you will see yes you will see when you stay in the secret place you will see you will hear sounds that are not given for men to hear you will see things you will access the mysteries of God in dimensions that will surprise you. You would never get revelation by copying men. It can only help to prime your desire. You will need to have a track record of a genuine encounter with the light of God. It is only in your light that we see light. You cannot see when he does not light the path. Hallelujah. I don't know if this is the best time to share some of my encounters, but I remember after my encounter with the Lord Jesus, I started having strange moments where I would stay for hours just locking myself and my Bible will be by the side of my bed or wherever and I will wake up to find my Bible close to me, open to certain specific chapters. That was how the Holy Spirit began to teach me. I didn't invent how to study. Literally. Literally. And sometimes, like you know a fog, that fog will fill my room. And right there, it's as if you are downloading a software. Things I did not know, like prophecy. What meaneth these things? I never had the time to crime scriptures as it were. I had a good background but they didn't have that time it was in one of these encounters that something happened to me as soon as I picked the Bible I can quote chapters and chapters and chapters and chapters just like that now you can do that and learn it like you do the Quran but there is a genuine way the light that comes from him May that light this night truly from God rest upon someone's spiritual life. You see, sir, one of the things that I've learned, especially because of our appetite for knowledge, right now there seems to be an unwritten rule, especially in ministry. The vastness of your spiritual knowledge seems to be the basis of accreditation and respect and honor. And that pressure has pushed a lot of men to go online and just download anything, anything, anything. Once the information is cast, they believe it's worthy of reception. So that in, in the dispensing of the information, then you would receive some honor as one who has done a good research. While that is wonderful, many have dappled into all kinds of metaphysical scientology activities of necromancy and mantra and all kinds of religions you see all kinds of books 
in their PDF format and our hunger without guidance will drive us to those things. We bring them down and find ourselves walking in possibilities that were not sponsored by the Spirit of God. Egypt was a place of intelligence. It was a place of knowledge. They were vast in their knowledge. So when Moses came and performed a sign, they already had in their archives a formula to reproduce the same result. That's why the Bible says, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. It says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he, he will guide you into all truth. There is a body of information that is healthy for your growth and relevance. And it is within the office of the spirit of God to guide you into that body of truth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is lack of genuine illumination that is responsible for the doctrinal confusion and, and the, the imbalances that we continue to suffer in the body of Christ, broadly speaking. Because there are rules of engagement. You do not make doctrines out of a personal experience. In as much as I continue to tell you about my personal experiences, they are uniquely, they, they, they were products of my hunger alongside the dimension that God would want to use me. And that is not a universal template for everyone to follow. And so the authority of scripture remains Lord even over my experiences. I cannot bring my experiences and make it a template. This is usually how error starts. Because of the nature of my walk with God, he can vet my life and say, Apostle, based on my dealings with you, you cannot have more than three cars in your life. Based on my economy and my dealing with you, this is the most healthy state that will help you to be efficient spiritually. Now, if I build a doctrine out of that experience and I call everyone who has four or five or six cars, I say you are in error based on my gospel. Usually the ones I mentor will now take that doctrine and it will not only become the error of Balaam, it will now become the way of Balaam and by revelation it will become the doctrine of Balaam. He says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the last day some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons. We need genuine spiritual illumination. You know that light came from God by what it does to darkness. When the light you bring refuses to affect darkness, then it was not light. The character of light that comes from Christ is that it must affect darkness. So if I lay hands on you and you become worse than you were when I met you, something must be checked. Now I may not know, but it does not mean that it should not be checked. There were people who received impartations in meetings and from that day, their spiritual lives went down. Not because of an attack. I'm not scaring you. I'm opening you up to these things. I came, this was what the Lord put in my heart to share even at this service. Illumination. We must trust God for grace. Having said that, I must also balance, especially for those that God have, has helped to be in ministry. There are too many options to allow members sit in a place where there is no genuine revelation. People are hungry. People are looking for truth. They are searching for truth. That's the reason why you must thank God for platforms like this. Every man of God, much more than inviting members, we have assignments to sit down and trust God to see, to see, to see. 
recycling messages as proof of our limitation when we plateau at a dimension and continue to give excuses um, very soon the empty pews will be proof that our people are tired it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above all the mountains and over the hills and then all nations shall flow through it they will tell one another come let us go to the house of God to the mount of Jacob there he will teach us his ways for out of Zion shall proceed the law it's going to be a place of mentorship Bethel the place of bread the hallowed bread of the spirit that when men sit down and lend us when members lend us their five two hours three hours one hour they must live with an experience darkness gone light nobody leaves what works the difficulty in looking for membership is a letter from our darkness and our ignorance to us that we need more light this is an uncomfortable teaching tonight but please don't be dissatisfied is to stretch us and bring us to a point of stability and power and results where a territory can know that Christ is still Lord otherwise we'll continue to fade like a garment and get to a point where darkness will arise and sit upon the throne of governance he says you are the light of the world the definition of darkness is a territory without you without your convictions without your value system hallelujah I consider it wicked for me to gather a people as a man of God and just recycle revelations and not have anything to tell them we owe people growth we owe them growth that comes by light the body of knowledge allocated for the victory of the saints illumination Let's take one more and then we round up for tonight. I know you're a man of the secret place because it is a place of genuine spiritual empowerment. The secret place is the place of the oil, is the place of the wine, is the place of grace, is the place of power. The generation that downplays the power of God is the generation that will lose relevance in God's program. Pains, wonders, transformation, the workings of God. And this has nothing to do with being in ministry. The place of spiritual empowerment. Jeremiah chapter 1. From verse 5 to 10. This was a conversation between the little Jeremiah. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And ordained. Everybody say ordained. Say anointed. An ordination is not just a call to ministry. It's the authorization to be there. And the way God authorizes men is by bringing the oil that is responsible for the solution to be provided if the oil is not on you no matter what was done you were not ordained true ordination is the hand of God and the oil from the throne allocated for the revelation of a dimension of God committed to you that works all the time not sometimes there are many people who will tell you I was called into the healing ministry and the healing result is one over hundred something is wrong with that ordination there is no testament I'm called into the worship ministry and you write one song per year there is no ordination there is a desire but there is no ordination 
I'm a teacher of the word and your sermons are full of confusions here and there. There is no ordination. I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. Next verse, please. Then he said, Ah, Lord, behold, I cannot speak for I'm a child. Seven. But the Lord said, Say not that I'm a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and... Let me show you how God ordains men. He put his hand, touched my mouth, and he said, Behold, I have put my words. If I call you as a prophet, you will not say what you want to say. I must put something from me upon you. your hand oh God will come upon a man and turn that man to a sign and a wonder listen if God tells you what he's calling you into go and cry for the oil of that mission Lord I'm tired of bringing reproach to your name by proposing dimensions I cannot defend send help from heaven put something upon my life that is a testament of an encounter Moses said Pharaoh will not believe me Ramesses was my half brother I know the stubbornness of his heart I need an evidence there is no witness without an evidence please let's trust God for grace for real results genuine results genuine results genuine results oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah 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 oh yeah yeah say oh yeah yeah Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.